Today we're going to be talking about a tool Sonoma Partners has built out called Dynamic Forms. Now Microsoft Dynamic CRM has a lot of power in terms of workflow and also business rules in order to update forms and change the system, change the form, and make it so your users can be really productive. With Dynamic CRM 2016, business rules allow you to do things on a form like set field values, set field requirement levels, show or hide fields, enable or disable fields, and validate data and show error messages. So these business rules are pretty potent, but what we found over the years, even before CRM 2016, is often a lot of people want to be able to do things on a form like filter pick lists, or they want to show and hide sections or tabs on a form. Uh, they want to have the form be really dynamic and do all kinds of different things that typically require coding and require hundreds of different little snippets of code in order to make happen. So what we've done is make Dynamic Forms a tool that allows someone who doesn't know any code, a business analyst, someone who can use the front point and click configuration personalization that you know and love within Dynamic CRM to do a lot of those scripting things on a form that enable you to do things like, let's say for example, show a section or hide a section. So let me just walk through some of the rules that I've created and some of the actions that those rules allow me to do. And then we'll flip around to the back end and I'll show you how those rules were enacted. So I'm on a contact record uh, here within Dynamic CRM. And if I refresh this record here within the system, you're gonna note that I'm gonna have some uh, little dialog boxes pop up. So this is something that you can't do with um, you know, just standard functionality within Dynamic CRM. And what I'm doing here is it's detecting what type of client I'm using. If I'm using the web, the browser, or Outlook, and because I'm using a browser, I get this little message that says, hey, you're using a browser. So that's one of the things that uh, we can do using dynamic forms is check to see how the user is accessing the system and then take actions based upon that. Here's just one example of the actions that we can, can take, and that is an alert. Uh, another alert can pop up depending upon who the user is and the data for that user. So I just created a simple rule that said, hey, if Bryson's the user and he has a first name, just create a little notification that says this user has a name. But that can go down to the user level that can sort of say, if Bryson is the user, then do this on the form. Show specific fields, hide specific fields, do an alert, what have you. Um, in terms of other sort of conditions that can be used in order to prompt actions, um, we'll see some examples of that. Commonly, we see things like field dependencies. So if you want to look at this form and you see that there's a gender of male and female and there's marital status of four different types, if I say male, it does what's called a cascading pick list where it says instead of showing three, um, males can only be single, married, or divorced. They can't be widowed because uh, men die before their spouses. And one of the things that Dynamic Forms allows you to do easily and without code is the cascading pick list, which is a very common requirement for folks. Another thing that Dynamic Forms allows you to do is to play with tabs and sections. So I can collapse a tab or I can hide a, a tab, um, hide a section based upon a condition such as selecting a marital status, let's say of single, which is gonna make it so that summary, that tab just kind of collapses and goes away. You'll note that I'm also able to hide tabs. So if I chose married, then the related hobbies tab is going to hide because apparently married people don't have time for hobbies. So when we're talking about dynamic forms and its, its power, it really can change the nature of the form, how it looks. Um, if you have an account of a specific type, let's say um, a, a vendor, then the vendor section can show up. If you have an account type of a customer, then a customer section can show up and the vendor section can be hidden. So having power over tabs, having power over sections, that's some of the things that you can do with dynamic forms. Another thing you can do is you can actually change the form based on related records, not just what's on this particular record. So you'll note that on the contact record for Dwight Schrute, I have a section for hobbies on the navigation. But if I jump over to the company that Dwight works for, Litware, and I change the account rating over to high for Litware, and I'll quickly save that to the system. Back on the Dwight Schrute form, and there are my little dialog boxes again, 
you're going to note that the navigation has changed. So we can change the navigation of the form. Um, the other thing we can do is we can set conditions based upon not just the record we're on, but related records that we have. Another common use case we have is making it so that fields um, get hidden, get cleared, get shown, so that you set data on a field. So you'll note that uh, right now, job title for uh, Dwight Schrute is a manager and he has a business phone. But if I eliminate the value for that, business phone goes away and it gets cleared. And when I go back and add data to the manager again, the field is going to show up and it's also going to pre-populate with a specific value, 555, 555, 555. Um, so you can make it so that depending upon the values that you choose, the sort of conditions that you set, um, fields can go away, um, they can be hidden, you can clear the values, you can set the values, you can even lock them down based on other fields. So if I chose a relationship type of default value, you'll note that now I can't do anything with this field. So making the fields required, making them so that they're read only. So there's a lot of power here with dynamic forms. And just to show you how easy this is to configure, let me drop in the rules section here. And you'll note, I can choose to look at entities across all of my dynamic CRM solutions. So all entities, native, custom, or just the ones with dynamic forms rules. That's what I filtered on right now, just on the contact record. And creating one of these rules is as simple as selecting the condition. So do you want this to work upon um, the client that someone is using, web, outlook, mobile, uh, a specific field, a form that they're using, so you can make all of these different actions form dependent, to related records or to the specific user, as we talked about earlier. And then after that, you can choose what you want the system to do. So you can have it do things like make rather sophisticated calculations. It goes a little bit beyond what you can do with business rules. Um, have a little JavaScript notification pop up. Uh, do some magic on a field, and we'll see some examples of that. So you can do things like um, you can filter records. You can hide or show fields. You can hide and clear fields. You can set them, put notifications on fields, all kinds of different things you can do on that. Uh, a form, so on the form, you can have actions um, being created. Same with the navigation or sections or tabs. Uh, have items go away, have items show up, um, collapse tabs, all kinds of different actions you can take with the power of dynamic forms. And adding a rule as simple as just sort of hitting plus, adding a rule, setting the condition. And in this case, um, you could do it really on just about anything. Um, you've seen some of those up top and then saving it and then publishing either the rules for the selected entity or all entities in total. So that's just a quick overview of dynamic forms. And you can actually get a copy of this at sonomapartners.com. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you with that.